Howdy, how you going? Well, this is a list I've been putting off uh, doing commentary for for a while, and just because I wasn't really sure uh, what to add to it, and it was uh, very much a video that kind of split the community, and I think that's fascinating that um, Family Guy has this way of splitting the community, um, and certain, I'd say almost certain personalities and certain ways people will take a joke and what is considered acceptable, and Family Guy splits people a lot like that, in that, you know, some people will say, oh, these jokes are funny, and some people say these jokes aren't funny, and I certainly fall into the category of saying the material they'll often use is just not funny. It's not not right, it's not good-spirited, there is no redeeming value to it, and defining what makes a joke that is what is the difference between South Park's uh, vile jokes and Family Guy's vile jokes is very difficult. It's very difficult, and I still can't 100% define it. Um, Doug did an entire uh, tutorial on it when a joke goes too far, and his kind of response was a, that there isn't really any meaning behind the joke, and I agree with that. There's no intention or something that they're trying to get across and that's, I guess, what it comes down to. It's purely done to shock, and so much of Family Guy is done to shock. And as we go through, I'll talk about it as much as I can remember, you know. And this one, uh, it was just very... Uh, God, I hate repeating myself on these words, but it's just a bad spirit. It's like it's intended with no real... Like, this telling that um, a person committed a felony... Like, why, why would they do that? What's the point of repeating that to everyone apart from to hurt people? Like, and that's the thing. So much of uh, behind Family Guy just seems with the intent to shock and hurt. It's like something you'd see on TMZ. They don't think about the consequence of their actions. They just think about the visceral appeal of um, shocking people and creating something controversial in order to get attention. And I guess what makes Seth a little bit different than other animation creators out there is he has no qualms with um, hurting people in order to um, in order to do his job. And it's like he doesn't really stand for as much. He doesn't have like that same moral code as a lot of other creators. Like I really do believe Matt and Trey stand for many things. They try to get a message across there is often a reason behind what they do. And they can say they're wrong sometimes, they can... they can step down from the pedestal on the high horse, and... it's not just that. Nowadays, Modern Family Guy is such a bore. There's not even like... even if it is controversial, you just don't care, and I think that's the best treatment we could give it, just... But the problem is, is that it is still so massively popular. Like, anything Family Guy that gets released on YouTube seems to get over a million views, particularly if it has to do with Peter being a jerk. And uh, I understand negativity bias, but I guess this is what this is what Family Guy, worst Family Guy in particular, does to me. It just makes me sad because it, it was ah, oh, just this is probably the most unpleasant list I have ever done. Oh. I'm, I apologize for some of the material on this list. I was trying to demonstrate a point by showing this, but it really is grotesque. Um, and particularly, this is basically infanticide, basically, which means um, killing infants. Uh, and apparently, Stewie just wakes up saying, Oh, I can't remember what happened. And I was like, whatever, cartoon logic. At least he's not hurt. Um, and... Yeah, Screams of Silence was so unpleasant. Um, Enter really tore into this one. I've never seen him so passionate about, um, like, just so angry before. And fair enough, I can completely understand why. Um, and particularly if you... Most of us have had some experience with someone in this situation, whether it's in our own family or otherwise, and you've got to be so careful with how you tread on this. And... I guess uh, the I guess the kudos I give to this one is that the spirit of it is better if twisted. Twisted because they're out to try and kill the person and it sends, sends a very bad message, you know. 
for all the... Pr Personally, in my personal life, when you have people like this, I want to see them rot in a jail cell for the rest of their lives. I don't want to see them killed or that sort of thing. You don't give in to that rage and that anger, that that caveman side of you. That's not what it's about because you never forgive yourself when you attack someone or hurt someone. And I think that's the most important thing to take from this one. I'm sorry, I'm getting more serious when I talk about these, but there's just they are such serious stuff, and it's important to take this stuff seriously, I think. Um, and that's, the I think, the thing to take away from that. When you hurt someone, you never forgive yourself. You know, if they've done a crime, they should pay for it in jail for their crimes, but, you know, um, you never forgive yourself. And this one was just so silly. <laughs> so silly. And, like, um... Again, you know, there's a standard humiliation stuff um, in most uh, Family Guy episodes, but I, I couldn't really say too much about this one except that it was annoying. Uh, like, he's got this little tiny Peter because God knows one Peter wasn't enough. You know, we needed two, clearly. Um, and his voice was just so unfiltered bad. And like, he's smoking a cigarette with the friggin... It was so absurd, it was stupid. And I... I think I gave it props. Part of why I put it in, uh, earlier on the list is because it was so kind of... It wasn't as offensively bad as many of the others. Pretty much everything after this. <laughs> Most of this is offensively bad, but this is probably one of the few that wasn't. That and I think um, Peter marrying... Um, marrying... Uh, oh my god, Chris. <laughs> uh, wasn't offensively shock bad, and I, I did like that. See, um, again, uh, Enta really uh, tore into this one and gave it a much better analysis, which I really appreciate. His basic um, response from my understanding, I didn't see all of it, was that, and it was a long time ago, sorry, but um, that it does send a really bad message about that, that someone should sacrifice themselves to appease their mean-spirited, cruel, malicious family. And why? That's awful. They should get out of there. They should stand up for themselves. It's the first time, I think, and the last time uh, Meg stands up for herself, and it is just... I mean, aside from all the junk, like, it's just filler all the way through, which is more the side I talked about, um, but Enter talked more about the side. And I like that he does comfort... Stu um, Stewie does comfort Brian through a very difficult time for him. I, I like that, and it's just... It's just him being nice, and I did. That was probably the one part I did really like about this episode. But in terms of Meg, it is such a twisted message, and just that the idea that someone should let themselves be a punching bag for their own cruel family. It's just I don't think you could say a worse message to a person, and it's kind of buried in there. It's not even direct, like so many soapbox messages in Family Guy. It's just very subtle. And I think it's it's a, such an awful message to uh, give, particularly to the some Family Guy's a bit like um, I, and actually again, Enter pointed this out. The or, they know their audience is fourteen. It's a bit like Call of Duty games. They know even though they rate it eighteen plus, it's clearly aimed at fourteen year olds and um, very much Family Guy's in the same category. And that's another reason I think we both give it such a severe attack like it deserves because that is so so it, it it's for kids yet they do this and it just ah, ah. anyway um this episode which uh essentially um as yeah as i mentioned uh peter uh, uh the the end of the world they think the end of the world's coming and peter uh um basically <laughs> people <laughs> i'm sorry that that is kind of funny um and I, I guess some interesting settings do come about from the end of the world coming but it just shows what an irredeemable character peter is and i don't know if a lot of people disagree with me on this one. Oh, this this part is disgusting oh oh sorry oh my god um uh um some of the material still grosses me out there's something very kind of real about some of the uh, violence in uh, Family Guy and 
the people actually do research. Uh, so the production team actually does research on making it more realistic, and I, I just don't get that. But yeah, well, my point is that what this episode really shows is just how revolting Peter is as a human being, as a father, as a husband. There's just no redeeming value. And what I hate is that every episode, or well, almost every episode, it tries to bring back that, oh, I'm okay after all. And he does his close-up face speech of, I'm okay, I'm sorry I did this, Lois. I only did it because I love you. And it's just... At least at the end there, they say, you know, well, buying stuff makes everything better. And I was just like, yeah, at least you're being honest there, buddy. Um, and fresh hair... <laughs> this is going to sound so silly, but I actually think this deserves to be earlier on in the list. It's, it's completely inoffensive and silly, uh, because... I don't know, obviously that's disgusting and ridiculous and revolting because it talks about the idea of incest and all that sort of thing, but it doesn't do anything with them or anything like that. It's just Peter being silly. Like, you can see, like, a, a kid and their, and their parents playing around something silly like this, you know, and just laughing over it. Like, I used to make jokes in kindergarten about my, um... My uh, female friend at the time, you know, marrying the pr the principal and having to stand on a, a chair and so it's just it's so silly and innocent in a way, um, but all, uh, disgusting but silly and innocent. And I'm not giving it kudos, saying it's right, but I think it's the others are s so bad that, and on an visceral level and just on a concept level, everything about them is terrible. Um, yeah, this one just really offended me when I saw it. Um, Stewie, I think that's an interesting thing about Stewie is that he's the he's the only character that went, I think, from bad to good uh, compared to all the other characters. And I don't know if that's because he was more of um excuse me uh, a soapbox for uh, Seth's nicer side, and Brian became more a, a soapbox for Seth's uh, more cruel side and more um. And that's the thing I think. Uh, Brian is meant to be an example, uh, like a uh, a way of uh, Seth expressing his flaws, and I guess you can give him credit for that, but it comes across as so unpleasant, and uh, he's just such an irredeemable character, and it's not fun to hate him, but you always know, even in modern episodes, he's gonna do the wrong thing, he's gonna hit on Lois with no reason, he's gonna just be cruel, he's going to be um, pathetic and petty, and you just want him to be a nice human being, because, you know, you want to like Stewie, I, I really do. Oh, yes, the Zitter, the um, Herpes episode, Herpes Love Saw. Um, yeah, uh, if there's any great advertising for not getting herpes, I think it's um, this episode here. But that being said, I think 60% of Americans have some level of herpes. Um, a lot of people have herpes without even realizing it. So, And this makes it even more disgusting uh, concept. Because, I don't know, it, uh, we're actually developing, though, interestingly enough, technology which... Oh my god... Ugh. Sorry I showed that and didn't give more warning. That is a really gross shot. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> There's so much silly stuff in this one. Oh, it's so gross. Um, we're actually developing, looking at DNA technology that may in the future be able to actually combat herpes. So, um, and, and that'd be nice. And while it doesn't heavily affect people's lives, I'd love to see a cure do come out. Because it's such an insidious thing. It hides in people's spines and so ugh. And anyway, it's just a virus. It's not, like, meant to be a jerk, Josh. It's not a human being. It's just a virus. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to contribute something different to uh, Herpes the Love Soul, but it was a lousy episode, obviously. It had lots of gross-out shots. It was just unpleasant all the way through. And it's, again, it's a covered it. I had to cover all these. <laughs> Even this one, but actually I covered it first for once, which was, you know, nice. And, you know, while we don't have ownership or rights to any of the ideas, it's nice that I could be ahead of the game for once. Um, and with this one, yeah, what makes it so unpleasant is one, that joke, which we'll talk about in a second, two, the fact that um, this is such an irredeemable um, part of Peter, is him just doing this. Is, Absolutely no reason. He does it just to be cruel and vindictive. 
And yeah, Marty is so right there. And it, it's nice every time you see beat, uh, Peter beat up when you uh, after as you see some of these areas because. And it's just watching him and uh, Quagmire be cruel to one another. And Quagmire should be cruel to him. He shot him. Uh, he shot his friend. It's just, uh. Even this shot, I don't even like to look at this shot. It was just a small part of it. But even you, you can see the malice behind that shot and how it's done. And I think animation can say a lot about the psychology of the person behind it and how it's done. And it's always intended to shock like uh, oh and this part <sighs> this happens to so many people in our lives so many people in our um, lives this occurs to like mental health problems are so common and just that they would do that it's just I've never seen such a horrible horrible joke this is, I think, the first time I ever did live action, and it's on my crappy camera, but... Uh, the only way I was going to show that shot was if I did that afterwards. I was just like... The idea that some kid would hear that and bloody Seth would tell them how to hurt themselves. It's just, Kid or adult, telling anyone that, you revolting man. Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, that one really sets me off, and I'm so, I'm so glad Enter went into it as well and tore apart. And he missed a part that I did, as well. I missed a part that I forgot to mention, or didn't mention, I didn't even see, which was that they, well, I show it there, but the, Peter directly says, you're watching because you're 14. I can't remember, I think it might have even been in this episode. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing, man? And it's why I've just never had any respect for Seth after seeing this episode, or anyone behind this. I don't even like the voice actors for agreeing to that line. I know we've got to make a living and stuff, but there are... And I know it's different in my situation, but there are times I have refused to voice something. I love to voice other things people do, but I will not voice stuff that does not fit the character or does not fit something that I'm willing to say to kids. And I think, yeah, it's important to have some standards on some things, but a different situation. And I'm not get excusing it though. I'm not excusing it. I'm sorry, I've just gone on and on about that part, but it was so vile. And there are good episodes of Family Guy, particularly when we go back earlier, and it has so much ability to change the uh, change culture because it has such an influence. It is twice as popular as South Park. Um, twice as many viewers will see it, but um, yeah, and it's nice when they used to actually use it to change the medium of animation, and they can because they've got unforgettable song numbers, they've got some really unforgettable stuff in earlier seasons, and you gotta respect them for that. For those wondering, I'm being beaten up by Fox and Viacom there because I knew they would attack me for this, and they did. You know, so that's just a little inside joke there. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks very much for watching. Sorry to got a bit serious there, but I'll, uh, I'll talk to you later.